welcome to another video by Janneke Brouwer, CND Education Ambassador. This time the video will be a little different since it will be a lot longer than usual and we're going to watch a training video. This training is for a nail art competition in which we competed and the theme was Africa. I will show you how I'm creating an artwork, almost a painting, on 10 nails. As a base I've used, used cream puff and I'm going to use all the different techniques that are already discussed in previous films. I'm using for the first step isopropyl alcohol and additives to create a water paint. This technique you can use on both sh uh, shellac and fine looks. Um, all the techniques I'm using now are a lot more complicated than in the examples but of course you don't have to copy this exactly. You can do whatever you like and use this as an inspiration. I'm now creating a base for my paintings. I will be creating a dawn and a daylight landscape of Africa and I'll be creating some portraits of some Maasai warriors. I'm now using different colors to create depth. So different kinds of blue, different kinds of greens, the additive line is now so wide that you can use any kind of green, any kind of blue, whatever you prefer. The upside of using this water paint technique is that if it dries out a bit, you can just add a bit more isopropyl alcohol to your additives and you have a fresh new paint again. And using all these different blues to create different skies, different depths, because it will be one big panorama view of an African landslide. Here you can see different colors being added and I'm also adding little brown in the grass. Here you can see an overview of how my background looks now. Now I'm going to use all sorts of different colors of shellac and a lot of them. Just like in nature you have a lot of colors so my landscape will do too. You can also see all the different kinds of sponges and a fan brush I'm going to use to blend my background and to add even more detail. Here you can see how I'm making my palette. A lot of different colors, starting with these few, and I'm using a makeup brush to set the first details. I'm working on my night sky or morning sky, depends on how you see it. I'm just sponging. If you want to know how to do this, this technique, sponging, you can look at a previous video in which I explain it step by step. If any residue is on the skin, make sure to remove it with a fine brush or even with an orange wood stick because if it will go into the UV lamp, it will harden and it will be very difficult to get off the skin. Now I'm adding even more colors to add more details to the grass. All these different kinds of green. There's really a wide range of colors you can use for this. Remember, the bigger the sponge is, the rougher the effect is you will get. So for little details, use small sponges. For the bigger details, use a bigger sponge. Again, any leftover residue, get rid of it immediately with a bit of isopropyl alcohol and a fine brush. before going into the UV lamp. Now I'm going to get all these detailer brushes and striping brushes to work on the details. I will use different kinds of green and mainly black pool to create different things. I use the fan brush to create a lovely grass effect but you can use the fan brush for other things as well. Make sure when you have a transition cameo on one nail that you keep account that in during dawn the grass might appear black, during daylight the grass appears green. I'm now using a detailer brush. You can just pick whatever brush you'd prefer to create trees, giraffes on the horizon, all these small details that make a cameo or panorama effect really pop. I'm using I'm creating a tree and as you see on the transition nail the tree will be black on one side because of the dawn and brown on the other because it will be daylight. It's little details like these 
that will make your nails stand out. Really regard colors when you're working. You can just look at the real natural landscape or anything else. I, for inspiration, googled my pictures of African landscapes and of Maasai warriors and used this to create my designs. And you can do this for anything. Any theme you have in mind, just google your inspiration, look around, draw inspiration from everything. On the right you can now see that I'm working on a mountainside. Use sponging again for the background, not filling in the details yet. And on the left I'm working off all the details. I'm using white uh, cream puff to highlight my work so you can make everything really stand out. White highlighting is a really good way to make everything you want to stand out stand out and make everything come to life. On the right you can now see me adding details onto the nail. On the right I'm creating a tree with a Maasai warrior underneath it. And this is also another lovely way of having a landscape on one side and Maasai warriors on the other, but making a transition between the two. Any remaining residue removed from the skin and now I'm using another color to fill in some more details, to create some more depth. The more depth, the more intriguing your picture will be. As you can see by the palette, I'm using a lot of different colors. The more colors, the better. Now I'm working on the other hand. Here I'm again finish the background. I'm now filling in details. Here we'll be painting Maasai warriors, some portraits, some face silhouettes, and even a shield. I've regarded their traditions and their wear clothing, jewelry, which I will paint on these nails. And once again, I'm adding more detail. The more detail, the better. You want to intrigue people who watch at it or look at it. And I'm going with wet shellac over wet shellac. It hasn't cured in the lamp yet. Make sure that shellac is a bit rougher than any other regular acrylic paint. So regard that while painting. Also make sure to support your pink on your other hand, as you can see here, to make straight lines. Now I'm going to start on the shield and the silhouettes of the Maasai warriors. I paid attention to their details, their hues, and I'm trying to copy this onto my new. Another mountain on the background. And filling in the details there too. It's all in the details. A panorama view you can do with anything. It doesn't have to be a beautiful landscape. It can be a city as well. It can be anything you'd like. Here you can see the details in the warrior shield. Now this entire video is fast forwarded. It usually takes about two hours for this to be completed. During the competition you will only have two and a half hours to complete your artwork. This will be on a lot longer nails, but it's important to train even on smaller nails because you will have to work in detail even more. For any competition it is important that you train a lot. So also for these nail art competitions, try to get in as much practice as you can. Now I'm adding, yet again, more colors for the detailing of the faces. And for this you can use black, dark brown, light brown, and even red. And now I'm painting the clothes as well of the Maasai warriors. They have this lovely red wear and clothing, which I'm transferring to my nails. As you can see, I'm filling in the face with a bit of red as well, making it stand out. And the portraits are also drawn through to the other nail to make it one fluent composition. Adding more details, adding the eyes, adding facial features. 
making it one. I'm also using a dotting tool to add jewelry and details. If you want to know how I'm doing this and how to do dotting and striping properly, you can also refer back to a previous video in which I will explain this step by step. The Masai are also known for wearing lovely jewelry in all these bright colors, which I will also recreate. Here I'm adding more color for this jewelry and see how full my palette is becoming now. Once again using the dotting tool to create the jewelry and you can see the warriors come to life a bit more. The important thing is to use a lot of color and a lot of details. This will make your composition intriguing for someone to look at. Once your details are finished make sure to cure it in a lamp for two minutes after you've taken off any residue from the skin of course and then use top coat to seal off your work and cure in the lamp again for two minutes. After this take off the sticky layer, the top film, with isopropyl alcohol and you will now see that the top film made all your details stand out thanks to its shining layer that it got from the UV lamp. Now after we've done this I'm going to create a sort of 3D effect to create more depth. I'm using regular gel, the Brisa, and now I'm going to create more depth, a 3D effect on their clothing, their hair, and this is also because the competition asks for different techniques. I'm using the black, the black pool for the hair, make it pop up and really intrigue my competition. You can see the silhouettes of the faces really stand out now. I'm drawing the lines of the hair, straight lines. Once again, do this by supporting your pink on the other hand. Make my composition fluent. After you've done this, you also need to cure in the lamp for two minutes to make sure your composition's finished. After you've done this, to finish with solar oil and some citrus hand lotion. Thank you for watching and if you got inspired and made your own composition, be sure to send it to us through all the social media, the links will be below. Thank you for watching and we'd love to see you another time.